so what we're looking at here is our first phase in our investigation about kicking rugby balls. We're trying to find the relationship between the angle we kick the ball and how far it travels. Today is just having a wee experiment, we play with it to see um, what information we might be able to record and also to see if there's any variables that we might need to control. Um, we're going to be going inside after we've had about 15 minutes playing with the balls and kicking and different tees and different kicking styles to see what variables we need to control when we turn this into an investigation or a fair test. So what we've been looking at or having we play with out on the fields is kicking rugby balls. And what our question is that we're going to look at for all of next week is, if, is there a relationship between the angle we kick it at and how far it travels its distance? All right, so we're going to change one thing on purpose, and that is what? What are we going to change on purpose? The angle. The angle, okay? So we're going to change the angle on purpose. So we've got to think about how we're going to do that. How could we change the angle on purpose? Move the uh, ball and the tee, like have it either straight up or you can move it back. Or... Okay, so you're talking about the angle the ball is at? Yeah. Okay. What we're going to look at, rather than the angle of the ball, is we're going to look at the angle that it leaves the tee at. Oh, so okay. maybe where you put your foot into the ball. So, so different points. Good. Okay. So it's, it's quite a hard one to do, isn't it? To actually change on purpose. My suggestion is that we go closer and further away from the goalposts. So it makes us automatically have to change our angle. We'll naturally do it to try to get it to go further. Yeah? So if we were to aim for the crossbar every time, or just above the crossbar every time, then that would actually change the angle, wouldn't it, if we move closer and further away? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're going to move closer, further away from the posts. Now we're going to need to, have to be able to record the angle. How are we going to be able to record it every time? That's... It happens in a moment, so how are we going to be able to find this angle? Big hint is what you saw me doing out there. What could we do while people are kicking? Oh. Video it. Okay, so we're going to have to film it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And so we'll have to record, you know, kick one went this far, kick two went this far, and then when we look at the video, we'll work out what angle each kick was. The dependent variable is the one that changes because we change the independent one. So it's the one that we, that we are going to have to measure. Okay, so we're going to we're going to change the angle on purpose, and it should change what? What should change because of different angles? It may not, but it, the height. The height will, but we can't measure that one very easily. Distance. Distance. Well done. Now, are we going to check the distance after it's finished bouncing or when it lands on the full? When it lands on the full. Cool, okay. So, we're looking at this point here where it lands, not where it rolls off to. Because rugby balls bounce funny as well, so that adds a variable, an unknown into it. How are we going to measure this distance? What's the most accurate way to do it that we could, that we could do fast enough? Any ideas? Think about Athletics Day when we've got javelins and things like that. What do we do when you beat a certain mark? Put a pin in it. Sorry? Put, like a pin in it. Put a pin in it and then what do we do? Measure. With a... Measuring tape. With a tape measure, okay. And there's other things we could use instead if you prefer. There's those wheels that are a metre in the circumference. So you can roll how many times it clicks and see how many metres that is. So there's a couple of options. So do we think... Would a metre wheel be the easiest way, or a tape measure? Tape measure. Tape measure? Meter wheel. What do we think, guys, as a class? Because you're the ones doing this next week. Tape measure. Who votes for tape measure? Who votes for metre wheel? Who doesn't care? It's pretty even. Okay, I think we'll go for tape measure, because it was just a win. And I really like the idea of whoever said to put a, a, you know, a marker in place. Okay, so we'll have a marker as well. So I'll have to ask the PE department for those. Okay, so now we've looked at the independent variable and the dependent variable. We have to control every other variable. Everything else has to be controlled. So we're going to have a wee think about what those other variables are going to be.
So as you can see from all the kicks we did outside, there were lots. There was lots of variety in how far people could kick it and how accurate they were and all that sort of thing. What were some of those variables that were actually controlling it? Remember, we've already decided that we're going to change the angle on purpose. So whether we kick it up very steep or kick it very shallow or somewhere in between, um, that angle's already, we've decided to change it on purpose. What we're looking at is other variables that might control how far it travels. Um, how the ball is landing on the tee. Okay, so the angle of the ball on the tee. Yep. And then you've also just said something there on the tee. So, would the type of tea have any effect? Yep, so the type of tea. The height of it. And the fact that we're, we're doing place kicks, not drop kicks or punts or anything like that as well, eh? So the type of kick. Okay. What else have we got that's important? What did you observe out there um, with. I'll put this another way. How many people are kicking out there? Yeah, quite a few hands have gone up there. All right, were you all kicking it exactly the same as each other? No. Okay, so is that a variable? So the actual person, the How actual we? kicker, okay? Where from? Everyone has their own. Right. Yeah, everyone's unique, everyone's got their own style. And I did hear someone else say another thing I noticed out there today. Wind. wind. Into the wind, with the wind, crosswind. You've got to decide. Is the wind going to be a tailwind or a headwind or a crosswind? You've got to decide. So wind direction, well done. I'll put a question up there. It's a still day, you don't have to worry about it. But it does mean the direction you're kicking in. So the same posts every time, for example. Because it'll be the same direction. Anything else that I haven't got up there? Okay, we've said the kicker is important because you might have different you might some might be stronger than others. What about the amount of effort? Did you all kick it as hard as you possibly could? Not always, eh? I saw some who were going for accuracy. So you've got to decide what's important. Here it's about distance, not accuracy. So if it's just about distance, what do we have to do? Kick, hard. kick as hard as we can. Okay? So the amount of effort. So in your, in your method, you're going to say, kick it as hard as you can aiming for the crossbar or aiming for just above the crossbar, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good bunch of variables. Now we've got to decide how we can control them, okay? How are we going to control each of these variables? So we're going to say, right, so for example, the angle of the ball, how are we going to make that the same every time? By using the same T and Great, so the type of T actually helps that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So it's just going to be the same setup. Maybe you're going to photograph it once so that you not always has to be set up that same way. Yeah? Yeah. So if you photograph it once, you can check it. Okay? The type of kick, we've decided it's going to be a place kick, so that's easily controlled. The kicker. Okay, now, here's where this experiment gets really interesting. There's two ways to do this. We could just nominate one kicker in the classroom and that's it. That's not a lot of fun for the majority of the class, is it? No. So surely it would be better if we had more than one kicker and we averaged the results for all of the kickers. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, so for this one we're going to have to average results. So maybe nominate, how many kickers do you want to have, Jerry? Who wants to be a kicker? One, two, three, four, five, six, lots. Okay, great. So we're going to have six or seven kickers. And then we're going to average the results. So that's a mathematical skill that we really want you to have, is averaging. So it'll really help you with hopefully getting some credits for this. Okay, the wind. What do we think is going to be necessary? What do we think is going to be most valid? Headwind, tailwind, or crosswind? Do you want to go with the tailwind? Yeah. Okay. So if there is a wind, we'll make it a tailwind. All agreed? Yeah. Okay, if there is a wind, it's a tailwind. So we'll always go for it being a tailwind if there is a wind. And we'll have to record that there was a wind. Okay?
Okay, effort. We've decided to go full bore, eh? Kick it as hard as you can so we can control that. So we've got all of these variables controlled. This will make it a fair test. It won't be perfect for results because there's human error galore in this that we can't control. But actually, I think we're going to get a pretty good one. So now we've got our experiment designed. We can start doing it next week, gathering our data. So our next step from here is to turn this into a method that we're going to write up. And we'll do that as a class. And then our next step from that is to create a results table for each kicker so we can start recording our results from our data.